Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, The Mighty Bjorn, and today for you I have a Mighty Game review of Project Wayne Man. This is actually an indie game that was only created by a couple guys, and it was definitely heavily influenced by Ace Combat, and honestly, there's... I could definitely see some parts where it's like, wow, if you told me this was, you know, a new Ace Combat game, I definitely would agree with you, but... Let's do a deep dive here. Let's start with first, the developer is Sector D2, and the publisher is Humble Games. Now, this was a game that actually initially started as a Kickstarter, and it was actually pretty successful. That's how they got the initial budget for the game. Uh, the engine is Unreal 4, and the release date was December 2020 for Windows PC and October 2021 for Xbox One. Now, in general terms, for the campaign, you are a mercenary pilot, part of Sakaro PMC Company. PMC Company? A private military company. As monarch, you fly in a series of missions for the Cascadian Republic, as Cascadia and the Federation wage war against one another. And that's pretty much the premise of it. You're just a mercenary fighter pilot, and it works pretty good, actually, for the premise of it. And there's quite a few things. I liked how they did that here. Like, one of the things is, is, okay, so you get a bonus payout for the mission itself. But then you also get additional payout based on how well you perform. The more you perform, the more you take out targets, the more you get paid. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day for being a mercenary, right? Surviving and getting paid. The game is VR supported, although I don't have VR, so I can't really give you too much information about the VR support for it. I do feel overall the game does have good graphics, especially when it comes to the atmosphere. Some of the skylines just looks amazing. The lighting looks pretty good, or at least most of the lighting looks pretty good. The music is fine. It's very Ace Combat-like, and I mean, if that's kind of your thing then it'll get your head banging uh me i'm more of a metal guy so yeah that's not so much for me but the music does work for the context of the game and there is certain points where it's like yeah this is a damn good damn good theme you know music for the situation at hand so they definitely didn't do bad there infinite flares although there was cool down on the flares it's, uh, about six seven seconds uh, but it's definitely, I, I don't know if I want, would want infinite flares, but one of the things that really annoyed me about Ace Combat 7 was the fact is, is you'd be in a 15, 20, 20 minute mission, have missiles flying at you from 20 different directions, and you get two flares. Yeah. Yeah, that works out really well. Thank God there's a mod for that. The sounds are great, especially the gun sounds. I loved the gun sounds in this. Uh... It, just all the sounds in general sounds pretty good, in my opinion. The BFM in this game is actually really good. I think, actually, the, the basic fighter maneuvers of this game uh, definitely is better than Ace Combat 7's. And it definitely works out better than Ace Combat 7. Because, honestly, with Ace Combat 7, you kind of get to the point where you just rely way too much on basically fancy maneuvers that fighter pilots really don't do that often so it gave a more realistic feel being more heavily dependent on basic fighter maneuvers than anything else no tunnel bullshit R literally no there was one mission where there was uh you could have done like a tunnel flight to attack the one target um or sorry, there was two targets. You had to do this too. And you know what? You could cheese it that you'd even have to fly through the tunnel. Because, yeah, if you lined it up right, you could have fired a missile right in the tunnel and just flew off before flying into the tunnel. So no tunnel bullshit. That is one thing that drove me nuts about Ace Combat 7. Oh, and if you don't know, I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons to Ace Combat 7 since I have both games. And this leans more towards Ace Combat 7 than, say, the fighter stuff in Arma or even DCS. Now, with all that being said, the 
when it comes to the FPS and the glitches means the game just works. I had no issues with FPS, pretty much rocking out a solid 60 at all times. Uh, the When it came to glitches, I didn't really see anything too obvious, although there is one thing I do want to point out. When I used the multi-lock missiles, especially the ground version, the, 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 the multi-lock missiles for ground targets, the sometimes when the missiles re reload, if I already had the multi-lock missiles queued up, um, it would not adjust the targeting computer for when they got loaded up. And what it have to do is it'd have to like select a different missile, then go back to the multi multi-lock target ground missiles. Blah. <laughs> I'm on shit, folks. Forgive me. Uh, I think the story on this game is good. It's a lot easier to follow than Ace Combat 7, to be honest. I really was not disappointed with the story in this. Um, I actually, yeah, it's just well-rounded, well-sound. It was easy to follow. Where Ace Combat 7, it gets a little sloppy at times. Like, they have just too many characters with too many different things going on with too many different points of view. And it would make the story at times hard to follow. With this game, it's generally, yeah, you're a mercenary. This is what's going on. Go out there and blow shit up. It's like, yeah, great. I like it. Multiple special weapons is nice because the thing is with, with so you can have up to um, three special weapons. With Ace Combat, pretty much you get a plane and you can pick a special weapon. And essentially what that does is it, it kind of it kind of cramps your plane into a certain role, and if you're doing a certain type of mission, it kind of cramps what type of planes you're going to take for that mission. Where here, the like a multi-role plane, like the F-18, feels like a multi-role plane because you can set your load up with your base generic missiles, your sidewinders, if you will, and then you can set the plane up with like multi-lock air-to-air -air missiles, which is you know, like an AIM-120, and then you can also take, you know, you could also take your Maverick missiles, which is your multi-lock ground attack missiles. And it's really nice, and it gives you, it gives the planes more flexibility, if you will, and it doesn't feel like you're being hamstringed into one role. Now, don't get me wrong, there's certain situations where you want your plane ha hamstringed into one role. You know, if you're going to go into a mission where all you have is air targets, or you have very few ground targets and your primary targets is air, then you're gonna to wanna to go for more of an air superiority fighter with an air-based, you know, an, an air-to-air -air combat-based loadout. And then there's certain missions where they're more focused on taking out ground targets. And that's where planes like the SU-25 Frogfoot comes into play. And that's where you kind of bolster up on the air-to-ground uh, combat capabilities and I think it's really nice that they did it that way um, honestly I kind of hope Ace Combat goes with something similar in the future uh, it was definitely a really nice touch here some missions you have takeoff and landings I feel it's nice for the immersion it's not a deal breaker to me but I like it when I see it because it adds to the experience of the game there's also a conquest mode alongside with campaign. The conquest mode is nice because it's got a bit of flexibility to it. You can play it in different ways, play it with different planes, things of that nature. And it's actually a nice long mode. It's a great mode to play after you beat the story mode to keep the game experience going with Project Wayne Man. Mods. The game has mods. It has a lot of mods, actually. It, it's mostly skin mods, that being said. But there is different types of mods out there that you can check out on Nexus Mods. And I I like mods with games anymore, to be honest. The next thing I want to point out is... Guns, guns, guns! Yes, the guns in this game works. Thank God! That's actually one of those things I hated about with Ace Combat 7. Is that the guns just were so bad... That they just were not usable. They weren't worth using. You basically might as well have not had guns at all. Where here, the guns are actually very usable. Um, 
And I actually used the guns quite a bit. I even got a lot of gun gun kills even on fighter jets. So it's really nice. The next thing is, is head shake. I like the head shake actually in the cockpit. Now you can shut it off, but I like that because whenever you're doing rolls and stuff like that, you're going to be shifting around a little bit in your pilot seat. You're going to be bouncing around side to side, back and forward. And the way the cockpit moves and shifts around, it kind of adds to the immersion. That That's what... You, that's what's going on with your pilot right now. If you're making a sharp turn right, then your pilot's, you know, kind of shifting to the right. And you can actually see it. And I think it's a very cool effect. Now, that being said, stuff that was kind of, bleh. It can be grindy, for sure. Uh, it's definitely not as grindy as Ace Combat 7. Because with Ace Combat 7, you have to, like, grind out your plane. You have to grind out upgrades. You have to grind out your weapon systems. We're here, you're just grinding out your plane, you get your plane, you have weapon systems. Now, there's not really any upgrades in this, unfortunately. Upgrades would have been nice, because then maybe it would have gave some of the planes more longevity. But realistically, especially like with Conquest, once you get past a certain point, some of the planes pretty much get to the point of not being usable at all. One thing I really disliked in this one is the clouds sucks. They really do. Uh, the clouds look good from a distance, don't get me wrong. But when you fly into the clouds, you really can't you can't see fuck all. And the detail's not really that good. I feel the clouds could have been done better. And there could have been breaks and stuff in the clouds so you could actually see what the hell you're doing. With... Ace Combat, the clouds sucked too, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't near as bad and it felt more realistic. It would have been nice if more time was spent in the cloud, detail of the clouds and how they work and the mechanics of that. But now one thing I do want to point out with the clouds, the guys with Project Wayman Man did over Ace Combat 7. In Ace Combat 7, clouds would affect the target lock range of missile systems. In... And radar range. In Project Wayne Man, that is not the case, which that is absolutely realistic. That would, clouds does not affect radar, does not affect your missile locking or anything like that. You know, it's it's going to know. Now, it would affect IR locking, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But when it comes to radar locked based weapon systems, it definitely does not affect radar based. Lighting in certain areas could definitely use some improvement. Just in some areas, it's not everywhere. You know, it's, it's you know, sometimes though the lighting is so bad and there's so much going on, it's really hard to know even what's going on, let alone being able to fly your plane. Now that's not a constant, uh, but you know, it's kind of one of those areas where I felt in certain areas it was weak in certain missions. And it was just a couple of them, really. Especially ones where they had, like, volcanoes and shit going on. Um, <clears throat> I would have really liked real aircraft names. That would have been nice. Uh, I'm kind of sitting back hoping there's going to be someone's going to come out with a mod. That mods all the aircraft names to be in the real aircraft names. Eh, it's okay. I mean... It, it, it kind of sucks to look at an F-14 and it's called, or and it's actually, the model in game is actually an F-14D. And instead in the name in game is like FD-14. And then you also have the F-A-18 Super Hornet and in game is called like an F-E-18. And it's like, yeah, what, you know, you're using the real aircraft that would have been nice to have the real aircraft names. It's not overly negative. It was just kind of like one of those of, yeah, that sucks. It would have been would have been nice if they would have just used the real aircraft names. And I get why they didn't. So I'm not going to scorn them too hard on that one. Plays mostly like an Ace Combat game. So if you're a fan of Ace Combat and you're looking for like another alternative to Ace Combat, great option right here. And there's just there's a lot of things that they did right and went in a more realistic direction than ace combat and i definitely appreciate that and when it comes down to it this feels more like a classic ace combat game than the more modern ace combat games does this is for people who like ace combat 4 and ace combat 5 
or, or even Ace Combat Zero, this game, th they're going to probably like this game actually more than Ace Combat 7, to be honest. Now, Ace Combat 7, that being said, has a lot of spit and polish that this one doesn't have, but there's... It, the way this feels, it feels more like the older games, and I definitely really appreciated that. Uh, now, for people who aren't really looking for an Ace Combat game, then, yeah, stay away from this one. If you're looking for more DCS, then just stick with DCS. No checkpoints. I really, really do not like the fact that there is no checkpoints. Don't get me wrong. It's a more realistic feel that if you get shot down or crashed or whatever, that you start all over again. Well, let's be honest here. This is not a flight simulator. This is an arcadey flight combat game. Um, every game since, I swear to God, the dawn of time at this point. I mean, even, you know, even uh, Sonic the Hedgehog had checkpoints. I don't know why this game does not have checkpoints. Even one would be nice midway through the mission. The missions are anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes long. Some of them are even longer. And there was one mission I did. I must have did that mission six times. And every time at the like the very at the tail end of the mission, something would happen. And I would like crash or get shot down most of the time it was crash i'd collide with another plane um you know it, i'd have to restart from ground one and this mission is like a 25 30 minute mission nothing gets you raging more than having to do the same fucking mission six times in a row no hand on stick that's how i'm gonna put it for some odd reason some of the cockpits you can actually see when you look down you can actually see the stick in front of you the FD-14, well, the, the Tomcat is one of them that you can see the stick in front of you. If I remember correctly, the F-4 Phantom, you can see the stick in front of you. And there's no hand on the stick. Now, maybe it's done that way for the VR stuff. I don't really know. But it would have been nice to have that little detail where the guy's hand is on the stick and you can actually see the guy's hand move around as you're flying the plane. Not a big deal. It's just it would have been a nice detail or... Even better still, just don't have the stick at all. Yeah, I mean, Ace Combat, it you'd never see the stick. So probably that would have been a better option if they were, you know, if they weren't going to put a hand on the, you know, have a hand and an arm, you know, and you, you could actually see the hand moving around while you're flying. You know, that's just my opinion. There's no cut scenes in the game whatsoever. There's no A-10 Warthog. Guys, devs, section D2, answer me that question. How can you have how can you have a fighter plane game with ground attack stuff and no A-10 Warthog? Like the boss of ground attack. The final boss you don't want to face if you're in a tank is an A-10 Warthog and you couldn't put one in the game. Now I'll give you props. You did the you did the Su-25 Frogfoot. That was nice. Let's get an A-10 Warthog. And before someone comments down below, yes, I know there's files for the A-10 Warthog in the game. And yes, I know there's a mod that you can put the A-10 in. But I officially want to see the A-10 in over a it looks like about a three-quarter done model over being completely done. I'm not 100 percent sure because I didn't experiment with it. It, I just want it in the game without mods. How about that? Now, up, uh, I covered down one. There's no mission timer. This one I'm a, a little mixed on because with a mission timer, it kind of makes you feel rushed. A mission timer also would have been more realistic as you only have so much fuel to complete your missions. So even if they put a, a you know a, a timer in, that would have been like really really generous on the amount of time you had to actually complete the mission. Now, with that being said, it's also nice that there is no mission timer because you can 
Take your time. You can enjoy. You can destroy more targets. If something happens, you get snagged up on an objective because you suck or whatever. You know, maybe you maybe you're having problems shooting down an enemy fighter plane. Uh, you know, it's nice not to have it in that case, but a part of me is like, man, I I kind of wish they had uh, there was a mission timer, and a part of me is like, yeah, I'm glad there's no mission timer. So I'm kind of that one I'm kind of mixed on. You can take it for however you want to. Either ways, with that being said, folks, the game, regular price, is $25. I do recommend this game. It will keep your hands full. If you're looking for an ace combat-like flight game that actually leans more towards a simulator than ace combat does, I would say this is a good choice. That being said, though, this is still, it's not a flight simulator. So if you're looking for an actual flight simulator type game like DCS, this is not the game for you. Either way, folks, that's my opinion about Project Wayne Man. And all in honesty, I hope there's going to be a sequel to this. And I do know right as of right now that there are the developers section, Sector D2, is actually still doing, um, supporting this game. Actually, they're getting... I, it sounds like they're getting some groundwork ready for a patch 1.5, which it sounds like they might be adding a new plane. We'll find out soon. But anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video and have yourself a wonderful day.